Okay. Yeah, my name's Carrie. Um, I'm a lecturer at Penn State, and I'm going to be talking about uh, my thesis research, which I recently finished up, as Amy said, um, on making uh, happier maps, so effective color congruence in thematic map design. So I'm going to start this talk today with a premise that I don't think uh, anyone is going to disagree with, but it's sort of the essential launching point for this research, which is that uh, how we map influences how people interpret our maps, right? So whether we do a class versus unclass choropleth map, uh, what visual variables we select, uh, whether we choose to visualize uncertainty, even seemingly small decisions such as whether we press that Flannery scaling button to account for people's perception of aerial uh, symbols, it makes a difference. Um, so today I'm going to focus on color which is only one of the many different things we can do to change people's interpretation. Um, and when it comes to analytical applications of color, we actually know quite a bit about this. We don't know everything yet, um, but in terms of applying color based on mathematical characteristics of our data, there's been a lot of research. There's even this tool that almost does it for us. Thanks, Cindy. Um, but essentially, the idea is that you match the perceptual structure of your data to the perceptual structure of the color scheme. So if you have categorical data, you would use a categorical color scheme. And another word for that is congruence. So this is from a paper that really talks about animation, as Carolyn was talking about animation, um, which shows change over time by using change over time. So the congruence principle is that the content and format of the graphic should correspond to the content and format of the concepts to be conveyed. So if we talk about, for example, the analytical applications of color, we can have a map that's analytically congruent. So this is showing um, ranked well-being ratings in the United States. So that map on the left is doing a really nice job of just showing worst to best with an increasing uh, multi-hue sequential color scheme. The map on the right, uh, I had to keep like looking back down at the legend to figure out what was going on there. Um, that's a, essentially, that's a categorical color scheme and it's, it's not working there. Um, so the congruent map does a lot better job of telling the story that I want to tell. So, but what about the contextual applications of color? There's a lot less that we know about this. Um, this is color based on the thematic data content. So what's your map actually about? Uh, are you mapping financial data? Are you mapping health data? Is your map about happiness or is it about cancer? And these are questions that uh, the current tools we have aren't intended to answer. And there's nothing really analytically wrong with this map. I mean, maybe a little bit, but you could argue the details of that. But on a personal level, this feels weird to me. This lavender, nice, I wear this color all the time. Like, I don't, I don't like that. It made me uncomfortable when I saw this map. So that sort of started to get me thinking about, can a map be contextually incongruent? Can the, can the color just not fit with the data itself in terms of the theme? So I'm going to break contextual color congruence down into two different categories. Uh, semantic congruence, which is color assignment based on logical associations with real world objects. So, uh, mapping the color of bird shells, um, that is perfect. Um, tomatoes are red, water is blue, uh, eggshells are brown and blue. Um, effective congruence is going to be my focus today. Um, so that is color, con color assignment based on emotive harmony between the color and the map topic. So affect is just kind of a broader term that encompasses emotion, disposition, mood. Um, and some examples here are we see uh, lavender is generally thought of as calming, orange is cheerful. So when we look at effective congruence and look at it in the context of this whole idea of contextual color congruence, uh, I want to think about why it matters. So we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. Um, try to quickly name in your head probably, um, the color of text, not the word, but the color of text that each word is displayed in. It's, it's pretty easy, right? I'll try to do it now. It's harder. So this is called the Stroop effect. And it's well known in psychology as the phenomenon where people are slower and more error prone when they try to name the color of words that are printed in incongruent or discordant ink. 
So for an example of how this affects us in data visualization, you could take a look at these two sets of bar charts below. Um, this is a paper, and it showed that um, one of these sets of color schemes was much more effective in terms of people were able to answer questions with these charts faster and with approximately the same accuracy level. And if you guess that one, that's, that's right. Um, so keep in mind that these are analytically equivalent. These are categorical color schemes. You could almost argue that this one is worse because there's the two oranges that are very similar. Um, but it actually mattered that they had a thematic connection to the data content. So for some examples that more directly relate to effective congruence, this study in consumer research up on the top left uh, found that people tended to match colors with the same emotions that they matched those car types with. So we see, for example, people matched red with, with active out of all the emotive words that were listed. Um, they matched sports car with active. And they also matched sports car with red. So we see the same result sort of on the other side. People matched green with like earthy and then they match like an SUV off-road with green. Um, so this, map, this um, other study looked at emotional responses to topographic map designs. So this was really interesting. Um, and people found that that map in the upper right to be shocking and strange. And um, there's, no, there's no data here other than the earth. Um, but I think it's, it's pretty apparent that the shocking comes from the discordant use of color. Um, as compared to the real world. And finally, this paper on effective color and visualization was really the launching point for this study. Um, I used these categorical color schemes that were developed here to design the color palettes for my map, um, all my maps that I made. Um, really interesting stuff. They showed that these color palettes were congruent with those emotions, but you know, this is, this is data visualization. So my question after reading this paper was, okay, so now, now what about the data? What about the emotive content of the data? So here is an example of a map that I made with one of those negative color schemes that I developed from that paper. And I matched it with some obviously negative data. So this is an example of an effectively congruent color map. Um, but what if I had used a different color scheme? I just like to watch people's faces. When <laughs> so how does effective color congruence or incongruence influence how people interpret maps? Uh, this is the research question I set out to test this spring. So I made um, a total of 544 maps. Uh, if you have a lot of time on your hands, you can read my thesis with all of them. But um, these are essentially what they all looked like. Um, there's some variation in the different topics. We have uh, homicide methods. We have kinds of desserts. We have relaxation activities. Um, and these were chosen at a, a workshop at Penn State. And then I had the following hypotheses that I set out to test. So um, I thought that effectively congruent colors would increase map reading efficiency based on some of the uh, Stroop literature. Um, I thought that effectively congruent colors would amplify judgments of map affect, that they would be seen as more appropriate, and that they would be preferred by the readers. So in Qualtrics, I made this survey, and I recruited 290 people um, using Amazon Mechanical Turk. Uh, we ended up excluding nine of them because they failed the colorblindness test. Um, so everyone that took this survey and whose results were, were included had full color vision. Um, so par participants were assigned to one of two objective tasks in the beginning, randomly, either cluster detection or area comparison. So in the cluster detection group, um, they just had to select the cluster on the map, and then they had to tell us which category the cluster belongs to. So here's, that's the green one, they match it to the legend. Um, and then they pick the answer. Um, area comparison was a little bit more challenging. This one isn't quite as obvious. Uh, the answer is yoga. I had to look at it for a sec. Um, but people were actually pretty good at this. They were slower to answer the area comparison questions, which was the intention um, to sort of have two different tasks at different levels of difficulty. But people got these right 96, 97% of the time. 
In part two, we rated people's emotional responses to maps. So they did this using a version of the effective slider that I modified based on uh, literature in the survey research um, best practices. And then I also asked everyone um, how appropriate do you find these colors for this map? And then to mark their overall opinion. So here's what I found. Uh, my first hypothesis, effectively congruent colors increase map reading efficiency. No, not really. Um, it's possible that sometime in the future I'll find this, but statistically insignificant. This is a one-way ANOVA. Um, I found no differences really between um, the congruent and incongruent maps in terms of objective efficiency completing the tasks. But, you know, if we always got significant results, why do it? Um, so, did effectively congruent colors amplify judgments of map affect? This one's yes. Um, this is Manny Whitney, um, non-parametric tests. Um, these are just the box plots, but what you're seeing is everywhere there's a color um, that is a congruent map, and the incongruent maps are shown in gray. So for every single map topic, whether it was dessert or caffeine or homicide, the congruent colors increase the intended emotion. People marked um, maps about happy topics as happier when they had those colors. Um, they mapped maps about sad topics as even sadder when they had the congruent color schemes. Um, you can also see, except for that one exception with nature, there's a lot more variance. Um, there tended to be a lot more variance with the incongruent color schemes. So my hypothesis there is that people were um, a little bit confused by the incongruence and didn't quite know how to respond um, to them. So effectively congruent colors were more appropriate. Um, this one's not quite as interesting. It's more just a verification that our, um, our color schemes and our topics were things that people generally agreed upon. Um, but it is interesting that, that the people who just, you know, crowdsourced participants picked up on this and were remarkably consistent in always rating um, the congruent maps as more appropriate. Not always, I guess, statistically always. Um, and effectively congruent colors were preferred. So not only did readers find the congruent maps more appropriate, but they also preferred them to the non-congruent maps, um, actually for all the map topics. Um, so, of course, this is, this is between, these tests are just between the congruent versus incongruent within one topic. So I'm not saying that people liked the maps about homicide um, that were congruent better than the incongruent maps about ice cream. It's, it's just like, all, when all else is equal, people prefer a congruent color scheme. Um, but let's take a closer look at the negative maps. We still have a significant preference for the congruent maps, but it's definitely the least significant. Um, and this is where I think things get, things tend to get really interesting because these results suggest that we should probably use a congruent color scheme. But what about if we want to sort of like lighten the mood a little or make something seem a little less negative, right? So we can think about this idea in the broader context of effective design in the media. So we see advertisements, we see television shows, and I think what this sort of got me to thinking is that it's all about the purpose of your map. It's all about the purpose of your design. If you want to increase your negative design, right, like criminal minds, that's like the whole idea. Um, you use congruent color scheme. The effectively incongruent is a mixed bag, right? So we have like pharmaceutical companies that use these bright colors to try and make you um, buy their product, but it's taking away from the fact that this is like about a disease. And then like these road signs that are rhyming and kind of weird, that kind of freaks me out. Um, it's like, there's a lot of debate over whether this is an okay thing to have on the road. Um, and we can think about this as sort of a graph. So um, we can all agree to not do the top left here. If you have really positive data about happiness, don't drown it out in the mud, that's silly. Um, but the rest of it, um, gets complicated. So when we have negative data, which unfortunately we map all the time, um, it's a little bit trickier in terms of thinking about what we should do with that. Um, is it possible to make a congruent map um, 
that is not too sad? Is it possible to make an incongruent map that's not disturbing to people? I think it, I think it depends. So now I'm going to go uh, from just reporting my results to a little bit of speculation. Um, but this is what I want to study next is, is there a tipping point in terms of when is incongruence mediating and when is it disturbing? So I'm hypothesizing that we have, say, a spectrum of negative data topics. Um, so say rising rent prices or something is mildly negative and we can go all the way to like human trafficking or something that's all the way on the other side, right? Um, so in the beginning, we might have this sort of rose-colored glasses effect. Like you can make this a little, seem a little happier if you incorporate some bright colors. But past that, past a certain point, it just becomes sort of really disturbing to have um, an incongruent color scheme and it's, it's sort of seen as inappropriate to map something so dark in such a um, weird light. So in conclusion, um, effective congruence amplifies map topic emotions. It's less confusing to research uh, to readers than incongruence. Uh, it's generally preferred and seen as more appropriate. I definitely recommend using colors on, positive colors on positive maps. This research reinforced that. Um, and negative data congruence versus incongruence is definitely a topic worthy of further investigation. So thank you. Um, thanks to all of these people, um, my advisor, my committee members, my pilot testers, and, and also to the people on Amazon Mechanical Turk, who I don't know their names, but um, this research wouldn't have been possible without them. So thank you. Time for a couple questions. I have a really quick methodological question. Uh, were participants aware of their response for reading time? Yes. Yeah. Can you, can you repeat the question? Oh yeah, he asked um, if per participants were aware that they were being timed. Yes, they were, and, and they were also shown a, a clock that would count, um, so they would hopefully that would motivate them. Yes. Did you find that there was Um, yeah, so he asked about neutral color palettes. Um, I, I didn't test neutral color palettes. Um, that was part of the decision process in um, designing this thesis. Um, one thought I had was to use sort of a grayscale color palette and test that, but that sort of has um, other connotations where it seems sort of old fashioned or um, it seems like it's in print. Um, so I think that would be definitely an interesting direction for future research. Um, the, the effect of color and visualization paper didn't have an, a neutral color palette. They did have a trustworthy palette. That didn't fit cleanly into my research design, but that would be an interesting application as well to use that. It was sort of like blues and oranges, like a corporate kind of color scheme, yeah. Take one more. Uh, yes, so you mentioned about uh, <clears throat> uh, either you control or you eliminated uh, people who were colorblind from the, the study. Uh, do you see uh, making actual uh, palettes that are, uh, you know, that you would look and research and that would be a colorblind friend yeah, that would be especially for, you know, certain types of maps that we need to be um, making sure that everyone can read well. Definitely that's a direction for further research. The color palettes I used originally were not colorblind friendly and I didn't want to modify them too much um, to, to hurt the emotional connotations. Um, but yeah, there was, I mean, people are colorblind, um, so we need to account for that. I think. Uh, once we now, once we know this, we can you know put these into color blindness tools and see maybe which of them are the not the worst, like you know the best of the the bunch, and then and then keep developing that in terms of making color blind um, friendly palettes because that is yeah that's really important. Uh, it, it hasn't been done yet here, but I would like to do that. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks very much.